On uh, December 3rd, 1967, Medical History was made, astonishing medical history. The author of this book, One Life, removed the heart from a 25-year-old girl and transplanted it into the chest of a 55-year-old man where it continued to pump for 18 days, in case you missed the news that day. Uh, will you welcome Dr. Christian Barnard? I guess we could start by finding out exactly where the heart is. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's inside the body. It is inside the body. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to be sure of that. But it's, it's more in the center uh, than it is uh, on the left or the right, isn't it? Aren't people sometimes surprised exactly where the heart is? Uh, yes, I, I think that's right. We, um, when we expose the heart uh, mm -hmm. for a transplant, we cut right down the center of the body. Yeah. Who first had the idea to transplant a heart? Was it you? No, I, I don't think so. I think that um, uh, the uh, uh, most important initial experimental work was done in this country mm -hmm. uh, by uh, two doctors. One is uh, Dick Lauer, who now works in Richmond, Virginia, and the mm -hmm. other one is Norman Shumway, who is in, uh, in uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I think they are really the pioneers of this uh, operation. Can I ask you anything I want to about anything, this? Anything. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, some of the publicity that has come from this incredible breakthrough, um, ha has not considered it a breakthrough, but has considered it uh, unfortunate, as you know, and you got a lot of publicity in which you were even called a criminal uh, at times. Uh, how did that affect you? The way I, I, I took these, the criticism was um, um, knowing that history repeats itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a very well-known uh, Austrian physician who ended up in a lunatic asylum because he suggested many years ago that doctors should wash their hands before they attended to women in childbirth, and this would prevent the sepsis that uh, result after a delivery of a child. He was so ridiculed and laughed at because he suggested this, that uh, he went mad and, and ended up in a lunatic asylum. And this is the usual thing that you find. Uh, we find that with people like uh, Lister and Pasteur and all the people, uh, the, the doctors who suggested new procedures, that at the beginning they laughed at and uh, said that the procedure is not really uh, anything of importance. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, knowing this, uh, uh, the criticism that we have, we have uh, viewed and accepted uh, with that knowledge. Yeah. How did, w it was Wachanski was the name of the gentleman who got the first heart yes. transplant. How, wh how and why did he die? When we operated on uh, Louis Waskansky, he, um, he was, of course, a dying man. Mm -hmm. And in addition, he, he had sepsis in, uh, in the calf of the one leg. A sepsis infection? Infection, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, as a result of needles that uh, they inserted to drain the edema fluid, the fluid that they had as a result of the heart mm -hmm. failure. And I think that one of the reasons that he died is when we used the immunosuppressive drugs, the drugs that's, that dampened down the rejection, uh, we allowed this in infection to spread. Uh, this infection entered his lungs and he developed a pneumonia, which we actually missed. We didn't diagnose it for the first few days and when we diagnosed it, uh, eventually it was too late and he died of infection. Were you crushed when that happened? Do you remember how you felt when you heard that he had died? Well, Did you blame anyone? No, no, I blamed myself. If you, if you read the book, you will see that uh, can I have the book out? Uh, sure. And we, we start this book off by, by saying that um, it starts off by saying, perhaps the first time I doubted God could handle all accidents of mankind occurred while attending a church service in New Year's Eve in Beaufort West, South Africa, where I grew up as a boy. Mm -hmm. The reason why this book starts like that is because when we wrote that first sentence of this book, we realized that Waskansky was already dead. And we want to make quite clear that we didn't blame God for the death of Waskansky. It was as a result of our own mistakes and our uh, inexperience mm -hmm. in the handling of the complications that Waskansky died. It's an interesting thing to say. W under what circumstances might you blame God? <laughs> I, I don't think you can, uh, I, I don't think you can blame God for, uh, 
the accidents of man, as I have suggested there. Mm -hmm. I don't know under which circumstances you can blame him. I guess I was just being ornery then. I, I just wondered if you meant that there were times when you... No, when I you don't were. think so. Have you ever regretted this at the times when you have been attacked by people and gotten mail where they've said that this was an unfortunate thing, this heart transplanting and all that? Have you ever been sorry about it? I have, I have regretted the, um, the whole affair when I, I saw how much my children suffered as a result of, mm -hmm. of uh, the, uh, the press taking up uh, uh, really in, uh, intimate uh, uh, family life sure. and, and, and difficulties in the family. And this has been exposed in newspapers and been ban banner headlines on the street. I, mm -hmm. I regret it when I realize how much my family suffered as a result of this. But I think that uh, uh, as far as the operation itself is concerned and the value of the operation uh, for the future, trans uh, future treatment of a very serious heart disease, I think this was an important step to take. Um, I've often quoted a, 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 a Czechoslovakian doctor who pointed out that a journey of a thousand miles begin with the first step. And unless you give that first step, you have no hope of completing that journey of a thousand miles. I believe we've given the first step. Uh, there's still a long journey ahead, but at least we have hope of uh, completing this journey. Let's talk about what some of the controversy was about. It was about, partly it was about, as I understood it, the fact that uh, we ought to call a halt on heart transplant, that we, maybe we didn't know enough about it, that maybe the, uh, there was too much hope built up by it. Wasn't it part of it uh, that... Uh, People thought that this was an instant cure for heart problems. And I think. Uh, I think. Uh, and that also, when a patient, when a person was dead, yes. was one of the. Well, let's take one at a time. I think that this uh, image that the heart transplant uh, got uh, as a, a, a fantastic operation that is the uh, the ultimate uh, the answer to all heart conditions. I think that image was built up by the lay press. Mm -hmm. I, I, the heart transplant uh, really was a tremendous news. The lay public enjoyed reading about it. Uh, the lay press uh, made money out of writing about it, and they built up this operation to something that re really uh, never meant to be. Uh, I think that the doctors who were involved in this operation realized that at this stage, uh, when we cannot uh, prevent rejection of a transplanted organ, the heart transplant will only be a, a palliative procedure. That is, we will be able to help the patient for some time, but we won't cure the patient by this operation. Uh, and, and, and therefore, it, it gave the wrong impression. And uh, because the people did not get the results that they were promised, uh, uh, they got disappointed uh, with the results that uh, we achieved. I think that uh, the surgeons and the, the scientists who were aware of the of the limitations of this operation, they've certainly not been disappointed by the results that we've obtained. We have in, in Cape Town done five transplants. And you must remember, we start off with dying patients uh, on whom we've tried all other forms of treatment. And three out of these five patients have now survived for one year. Uh, one died, but two of them are still alive, and they've lived for more than a year after the transplant. This is all we hope to be able mm -hmm. to do with the heart transplant. Dr. Barnard, we were up to the point of the terribly difficult question of um, when a patient is dead, the patient that the heart is taken from. It, because it, it's difficult because it's considered a moral question and a medical question and a philosophical question and I suppose a lot of things. Uh, and there's disagreement on this. So. <clears throat> I think for centuries now uh, it's been accepted uh, that a, a, a person is dead when the doctor certifies that he's dead. In, in mm. other words, a, 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 a a patient is dead when the doctor says the patient is dead. Uh, it's, it's not uh, possible to give a definition for, uh, for death. It's like saying, uh, give a definition for wind. What is the definition of wind? You can't define it, but you diagnose the presence of wind by certain phenomena that you associate with wind, like uh, the trees, the leaves move, uh, you can feel it against your cheek and you see the dust flying. Sure. And you say the wind is blowing. Well, the same way with death. Uh, the diagnosis of death is a clinical <coughs> diagnosis, a clinical impression. Uh, mm -hmm. You diagnose the state of death because certain symptoms and signs are present in, in a patient. Yeah, but there's disagreement on that. And there are some who say that, the, uh, the, that your definition of death or someone else's definition of death may not be the most cautious one to take and that uh, 
Uh, I think no, there's I one doctor who says that he must he waits for 12 hours until there is no electrocardiogram until it, that's absolutely flat. And that, but if you wait that long, as I understand it, the transplantable heart is no longer valuable. So I don't uh, think that's quite correct. I think to the man in the street, uh, uh, the definition of death was that a patient is dead uh, when he fulfills three criteria. Firstly, when there's no symptoms and signs of brain activity that the brain has died. Secondly, there's no spontaneous respiration. He's not breathing anymore. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, there's no evidence of heart activity. Now, these are the three criteria that we used in the diagnosis uh, of death in our first transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case of Denise Darval, we waited until all these three criteria were fulfilled before we opened the chest to remove the heart. Since that time, we've moved a little bit more to the modern definition of death, and that is a patient is dead when his brain is dead. Mm -hmm. uh, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't matter whether his heart is still beating, but when his brain is dead, he's dead, because the heart is kept beating in an artificial means. Mm -hmm. What happens when the brain dies is that uh, that particular individual will stop breathing, <coughs> and because he stops breathing, there's no oxygen going to the heart, and the heart will stop beating. But if artificially you breathe for this patient, the heart will continue to beat until you stop the breathing. So you see, you have a beating heart in a dead human being. And therefore, there's no reason why the beating heart could not be removed, because you are removing the beating heart from somebody who's dead, from a corpse. How much did you worry about this beforehand? I didn't worry about it at all. Mm -hmm. Because uh, long before we did the transplant, uh, uh, neurologists and uh, neurosurgeons had patients in which they diagnosed brain death. Uh, these people were on artificial breathing machines, uh, and they realized that it was, there was no sense in keeping the breathing going, keep the heart beating, and therefore they stopped the, uh, the respirator or the breathing machine and allowed the heart to stop beating. This was something that uh, was done long before we did the first heart transplant. The thing that, that was it interested me and amazed me is that uh, a tremendous amount of discussion uh, all of a sudden started after we did the heart transplant. Yes, and a lot of tra heart transplants also started. Yeah, over. but the, the, thing, the point I want to bring out is that uh, the, nobody mentioned these objections and these uh, problems uh, before the heart transplant, yet liver transplants were done long before heart transplants where they had to toil and struggle with the same problem. Why do you think that is? I, I think the, the the main reason for it is because uh, you got your, uh, your name in the newspapers and on the news media when you talked about heart transplantation. Mm. So everybody discussed the problems because this, this was sort of in the fashion and, and uh, you made a name of yourself when you discussed this problem. People don't like to think that doctors are egotistical, but we know that they can be as well as people in any profession. And uh, there was, of course, some jealousy that you were the first, wasn't there? Well, I, I don't like to, to think about it that way. I, I, we are human beings, doctors mm. are human beings, and uh, I'm quite sure you are probably jealous of um, some other show the same as yours. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and therefore, I, like uh, anybody, I suppose there were doctors that were jealous of not mm. being the first. Uh, I haven't come across them yet, but I, I'm sure as they are human beings, there probably were some. Mm. Do you carry malpractice insurance? Not one cent. Why not? Because in our country, it is uh, just about unheard of for uh, uh, the public to sue a doctor. It's very heard of in this country, isn't it? And I think that's one of the reasons why the first heart transplant was done in South Africa. Ah, really? Because the doctors here were as ready as we were in South Africa, but mm -hmm. I think they were held back by the fact that they were afraid uh, with this new procedure and some unknown factors, they may be sued. Is that why there were so many right after you started and then in the yes, next year there were... because everybody was, was ready to do it. They were just waiting uh, uh, for the initial push. Mm -hmm. I, I've often explained it's like a lot of uh, boys standing next to, the, next to a pool, a swimming pool, and they're not quite sure how cold the water is, but as soon as one jumps in and he says, well, the water is not so bad, everybody mm -hmm. else jumps in. You see, they can all swim. But the number of them has decreased. There were quite a few the first year, about 100, I believe. Or well, maybe I'm way off. But yes, there were... there's, there's, quite, there's been a tremendous reduction in the number of transplants done. And this is mainly due to the fact that I've pointed out that there has been a dis disappointment in the mm -hmm. results obtained. Because the, 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 the whole 
the promises given by, mainly by the lay press to the public and to some doctors too, has been that this is, uh, you know, a marvelous operation that's going to cure all heart disease. This was incorrect. How long did you expect the first patient to live, honestly? Uh... Well, I honestly didn't expect that he, he would survive for one year. And he survived uh, uh, for one year and eight months. Not the very first one. No, the, the first one only survived for 18 days. Yeah. Uh, but you didn't I expect thought, a year. No, I, I thought that he would live longer than 18 months. What did you uh, 18 days, I'm sorry. You did, in that case. Yeah. Um, that was the one with the, where the infection set in. What do you tell the person himself what, uh, in, in the first instance? In a, in, in, a, in a situation like this where you have a new procedure with uncertain <coughs> results, I believe you must be 100% honest with the patient. And we told uh, Waskansky that uh, he had a heart disease which we uh, could not cure, mm -hmm. that we have tried all the uh, treatment that we were aware of to help him. He's come. Uh, to the end of the road, and there was a possibility that we could help him with a heart transplant. Uh, this has never been done before, so we are uncertain of uh, what we can offer him, but we have done experimental work, and we hope that we will be able to transplant the heart and get the heart to function. How long the heart would function after the transplant, we could not tell him. A lot of people think now that it would be better to wait till the mechanical heart can be substituted. Do you feel? That's true? Or do you agree with that? No, I, I don't agree with that. I think that uh, uh, there is a place for a mechanical heart if it can be developed uh, to function well. Uh, but I think we shouldn't uh, fall behind in our research mm -hmm. uh, in the possibilities of transplanting a, a natural heart. <laughs>